Signs, and I'm speaking to you today from Mapumalanga, South Africa. We uh, greet you all in the name of the Lord Jesus, my wife and I, Judy, Judy, my wife, uh, and we just want to tell you that today we're going to be sharing with you a prophecy that the Lord gave my wife just a day after the second debate, and we're going to be sharing that with you. What it is, is just a day after we were in holy prayer and the Lord gave my wife a word what she saw was she said she saw a huge concrete foundation and on that foundation was that emblem that, that Hillary Clinton has the big H with the arrow pointing uh, to the side and that was on, on top of the foundation, you know, painted on the top. There was nothing on the foundation. There was no building or anything, just a foundation. And she hovered over that foundation. And then she saw from the heavens a huge bolt of lightning come down, strike right on top of the big H. And it cracked the foundation, made a big fissure. And then the whole foundation just crumbled to the ground. And she shared with me, you know, she said, you know, Tommy, I don't know if that's a literal... Uh, bolt of lightning or if it's symbolic but God is going to send he's going to intervene and send his lightning uh, in regards to the Clinton campaign and so we were just like praising the Lord for this word because we see that so much you know lies and deceit is coming from the Democrats and so we're so glad that God is wanting to, to intervene and you know, the Bible says that lightning is used for correction. And to correct something, God will sometimes send his lightning. And that's interesting because we're at a time in American history where we really do need God's intervention. Amen? I mean, we've tried to do it all ourselves, and it's not working out. And just like Nebuchadnezzar in the Old Testament, he was trying to do everything himself. But he found out, God showed him that he does intervene in the, in the affairs of man. And we're asking God to intervene in this election. Not only we, but I'm sure all good Christians everywhere are pleading and praying and asking God to come down and intervene. The next day after this uh, prophecy that my, my, my wife was given, I was watching uh, the Kelly file on Fox News, and Charles Crodhammer said something interesting. She asked the question, she said, you know, Charles, uh, is the race over for Donald Trump because of all the false accusations and, and everything, the audio uh, tape that was released and everything? And you know, he said, unless out of the blue, a large boat of lightning comes down and strikes in behalf of Donald Trump, you know, I don't see how it's going to work out for him. A couple days later, again, Charles Crodhammer said on the uh, O'Reilly factor, he said, quote unquote, unless God, unless some act of God comes uh, and intervenes in Trump's behalf, like maybe, you know, Hillary has uh, uh, some kind of physical attack or something, he says, I don't see that, you know, it's going to be in Trump's favor. So this was twice that Charles Crodhammer said that. And I thought to myself, yeah, thank you, Charles. <laughs> because, you know, the Bible says out of the mouth of babes, you know. And Charles, I don't know where he's at spiritually, but, you know, I don't think he's a deep Christian. Uh, he's never really come across as that. But, you know, God will use anybody to speak his word. And I just looked at that as confirmation that someone in the world spoke that kind of, you know, I think he was being a little sarcastic uh, when he said it. But you know, God, he, when he is for you, the Bible says, when God is for you, who can be against you? Amen? That's Romans chapter 8. So when God is for Donald Trump, who can be against him? You know, God is in charge. God is in control. I wanted to share with you Psalms 57.6 because the liberal media and the powers that be really want to be digging, uh, they're digging a pit for Donald Trump, hoping that he gets, you know, sucked up into it. 
uh, with all these false accusations, these people coming forward, these women. King David also had a lot of trouble in his life with enemies. And he said in Psalms 57, 6, They spread a net for my feet. I was bowed down in distress. They dug a pit in my path, but they have fallen into it themselves. They fall, have fallen into it themselves. In other words, you know, Saul and all these others were out to get King David, but they fell into the pit themselves that they dug for King David. And so now, right now, I just want you all to agree with me. Right now, Lord Jesus, we come before you, and we just ask you, Lord Jesus, that every pit that the enemy has dug for Donald Trump, that every pit the enemy has dug for America, for every good senator, or every good congressman, every good city dog catcher and school board member, every pit, every lie of hell that's been uh, propagated toward those that are running for political office in America this election, that are good and honest people, we come against these false accusations, we come against these lies, we come against these pits in the name and blood of Jesus, and we ask you, Lord, to turn it all around, send your intervention angels, send your angels, Lord God, that intervene, send your mighty angels, Lord God, to come down and intervene in this election. And Lord God, I'm reminded of what Daniel said in chapter 9 when he was not only praying, but he was fasting. And he said a long prayer in that chapter. And, and in that, toward the end of that prayer, he said, Lord, we do not come before you because we're righteous, but because you are merciful and your grace. That's why we come before you. And so, Lord, we, 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 come, we come before you today in the spirit of Daniel. Lord, saying, saying to you, Lord, it's not because of our righteousness that we ask these things, but it's because we know that you are a merciful God, because your Bible says, where wickedness is, there grace much more abounds. And Lord, never in the history of America has there been so much wickedness and evil. And so we know that your grace is much more abounding. But Lord, we know that it's a qualification because it says in 2 Chronicles 7, 14, if my people if my people so Lord God we are your people and we are going to claim that that we are going to do what you said because you said if my people who are called by my name by my name will humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways then will I hear them from heaven will forgive their sins and will heal their land. God wants to heal our land, friends. God wants to heal America. But he can only do it as God's people humble themselves and pray, turn from their wicked ways. We need to repent. We need to just forsake the sin that's in our lives. Amen? We need to turn from it. And we need to pray for those that have despitefully used us and that have wronged us. We need to pray for our enemies. Amen? We need, we need to do that because that's, that's, that's powerful in the spirit. Yeah, um, and also, what God showed me, Queen Esther in the Bible, she prayed for three days and she asked all of those in the kingdom, the good ones, the godly ones, to pray for three days, to join with her in corporate prayer for three days. And then she would approach the king. And you know when she approached the king, and she had all that prayer and all that fasting uh, behind her as a covering. God honored her, and she found favor in the eyes of the king. And her, pe her people were delivered. They were facing mass execution. America is facing mass execution. America is facing destruction, friends. If Hillary Clinton gets in there, it's not going to be a pretty picture. We're going to lose our religious liberty. We're going to lose our freedoms, our Second Amendment. We're going to lose a lot of things. So we need to stand in prayer. And I'm asking every Christian to try to pray and fast for at least three days. Some of you can't do that. And I understand that. But you know what? You can give up chocolate for a week. You can eat vegetables maybe for a week or, or longer. You can do something. Give up something. Show God you're serious. Humble yourself. Some of you can fast longer than three days. Some of you can fast a week. 
or even longer. I'm asking everyone to do their part. We need to come together in a spiritual way. And this is the last leg. As I'm recording this on October 26th, we've got just a little less than two weeks left. We're in the last lap, you know, the Indy 500. <laughs> well, we've had 500 laps going round and round. And I'll tell you what, we're all dizzy, right? But we're on the last lap now. And we don't want to blow a tire, okay? We don't want to run out of fuel. <laughs> Amen? We need to keep oil in our It says keep oil in your lamps. So we need to pray down the Holy Ghost oil to, to, to keep our engine running. Amen? We need to get Donald Trump. He's weary. He's tired. You know? We need to come under him like Moses was going was gonna to fall. He was, gonna, he was getting tired. But what did they do when they were parting the Red Sea? They, they helped him. They raised up his arms so that he could hold the staff. We need to come and hold up Donald Trump in prayer. We need to hold him up in prayer. We need to cross this finish line together, friends. We need to cross it. And I'm over here in South Africa praying for my country. I love America. I always will love my home country. And I haven't been home since Bush was president. Uh, but you know what? Um, I know that God is not finished with America yet. Amen. That's the answer, Kelly. On the Kelly file, she says, is the race over? And Charles said, well, not really. But he, you know, he said a bunch of mumbo jumbo. But I'm telling you in the spirit, it's not over. Amen? It's not over. And uh, we hope maybe one day we'll be in the States and, and we'll minister. Maybe you, you even get to meet us one day. But if not, please keep our ministry in prayer. Keep my wife in prayer. She teaches at a local school here in South Africa. And so we're really... You know, both of us doing our part to try to help here in South Africa. Uh, so we all need to be salt wherever we are. Amen. I love you guys. God, God bless these dear people, Lord Jesus. I just pray a blessing over them and a blessing over America. Lord God, give us Donald Trump as our 45th president of the United States.